Thank you, Kathy. A few announcements this morning. FCC will remain virtual at this time. The first Sunday of every month, which includes today, we will have a Zoom worship service and communion. That includes today, as I said, March 7th, April 4th, which is Easter Sunday, and May 2nd to list the next few months. Every other Sunday, we will have a pre-recorded YouTube sermon, which will be available on YouTube and on our website. Every Wednesday, we will have our usual mini sermon, which will be posted on our website and sent out by email that same week. Secondly, due to the COVID pandemic, I cannot travel between Connecticut and Massachusetts at the moment, but I am always available by phone and through email. This service is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube and on our website later this week, most likely today, but by Tuesday, definitely. There is also the question of Ash Wednesday, what you would all like. I have already recorded a Lenten devotional for Ash Wednesday. Um, not unlike our Advent devotionals, but I didn't know if you would like something a little more than that. I'm opening this up to everyone who is here. Do you like a small service? Would you like a little recorded sermon on top of the Lenten devotional? Lent um, begins on Ash Wednesday, which is February 17th which is a week from this Wednesday, so approximately 10 days from now. Anyone have any thoughts? Do you not like Lent? A lot of people don't, that's okay. Some people do like Lent, and that's also okay. I like the idea of having a very small devotional, but <clears throat> a lot of people give things up for Lent, and I always have felt that it's a good time to take on something new and positive, including gratitude. Okay, so then the Lenten devotional and small one-minute positive thinking sermon? Sounds good. Okay. I'm just writing this down with a pen that doesn't work. I do like the idea of positive thinking, especially this year. We don't know what's going to be continuing on the next few months with the pandemic and we all need positive thinking. So I do like that idea, Sandy, thank you. Anyone else, thoughts? What's your interpretation? What would you like? I liked, I put together the Lenten devotional with my brother because we like reading the Psalms together and it brings us comfort. So that was really put together on the spur of the moment because it brought us comfort and we thought this is fun. Maybe it will bring comfort to others. So really that three minute Psalm brought us comfort and we thought other people too might find comfort for so for us that yeah. song was really what brought us comfort and might to others and there is a really it's a pensive psalm but there is a bit of hope a bit of a twist to it to the end i like that Okay, excellent. Okay, then let us enter into the spirit of worship. Our call to worship this morning is being read by Sue Stanley. If you will give me a moment, I will share our screen. If it likes me, hang on.
Can everyone see Psalm 147? Not yet. No. I, we can, can we click on it? Uh, no, hang on, hang on, here we go. Now can you see Psalm 147? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Sue Stanley? Okay. Psalm 147. Psalm 147, praise for God's care for Jerusalem, verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Thank you, Sue. Our opening hymn this morning is number 100, 163, Lord of the Dance. We can wait a moment while I share the screen again. One moment. All right, Kathy. Corinthians. <coughs> give, me, oops, give me a moment. <coughs> Can everyone see First Corinthians? No. no of course not. <laughs> oh, so much fun. Hang on. Now, can everyone see First Corinthians? Yes. Okay. yes. okay, and is read by Sandy Hubbard. First Corinthians 9, 16 to 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, 
though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. So ends the reading. Thank you, Sandy. One moment, everyone. Our second reading is read by Donna Cohen and should be up on your screen. Yes. <coughs> One to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Oops. Should be there. Um, right there, 26. Lift up your eyes and see. Who created, who created thee? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends our second reading. Thank you. Give me one moment again. Oh. <clears throat> This is interesting. I have it up on my screen, our next hymn, but for some reason I cannot get you to see it. So okay. it is, I'm I'm just going to, hmm. Hang on. Behind no. I opened too many files. Let me, let me start closing files. And hopefully, hang on. Okay. Him 379. New share. There we go. Okay. Our next hymn, which you should all now be able to see, <coughs> is hymn number 379, There is a Balm in Gilead.
Thank you, Kathy. Okay, you should be seeing me again. I'm going to try and pin myself. I believe I'm pinned. First, I must apologize. In the original version of the bulletin, you have the wrong title for the pastor's message. The actual title for our sermon this morning is Never Compare What Can Never Be Compared or Apples and Oranges. <laughs> now, we have 10 verses this morning, and I am under no illusion that we can get through all 10 verses and have home communion this morning. So I'm going to do my best to get through about five or so of these verses. And please bear with me. I show you that I have scribbled all through it as I usually do. <laughs> what we have here in Isaiah chapter 40 is someone declaring the magnitude of the greatness of the Lord God. That's, that's all you really need to know is going on. He's declaring the magnitude of the greatness of God, and he is doing it in as many ways as he can think of, in a very poetic form in Hebrew. Have you not known, the poet says, have you not known? Have you not heard? He can't believe it. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told since the beginning of time? He's referencing Genesis. Have you yourself not understood from the very foundations of the earth? Once again, he's referencing Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2. It is he, he being the Lord God. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Now we need to know a little bit about what they thought about the earth. The earth is a circle, you know, kind of like a disc, not really, but you know, if, it, if that helps you think of it, it's like a circle, it's not a globe, it's a circle, it's a disc. And God is sitting in the clouds above. There's a reason why we have that image. It comes from the Hebrew people originally. It doesn't come from the dark ages. It's from long before that. It's from here. So God is sitting above the disc or the circle of the earth and it's the earth's inhabitants are like grasshoppers. That's a very clear mental image. If you think of a grasshopper, they're these tiny little annoying things that look really weird, but they're very tiny very tiny, and you can step on them. That's how insignificant human beings are to the Lord God. He's not saying that God wants to step on human beings and thinks of them as lowly and annoying and keeping him up late at night when he'd rather be sleeping. God's not God. The poet is not saying that, but he's saying that on a scale of creation, Human beings are like little annoying grasshoppers. And God is so much greater. He's off your screen. That's how much greater he is. Continuing. God stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Beautiful imagery. Just imagine a curtain covering everything. Covering everything and spreads them like a tent to live in. You imagine that image, a curtain or a tent protects everything beneath it, but you cannot see what's outside of it. You cannot comprehend what's outside of it. You may know that it's sunny. You may feel the heat of the sun. You may know that it's raining. You may hear the rain, but can you actually comprehend the rain or the sun if you've never been outside a tent before? No. The tent protects, but the tent also veils completely. Verse 23, God brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. This is a very important statement. 
to people, to the people of Israel who live under the ownership of foreign princes, who live under foreign kingdoms, who live under the whims of foreign rulers. The poet is saying, God is so much greater than these princes. They are not, they are nothing. They are minuscule. They are just a speck in everything. We continue with this metaphor, verse 24. Scarcely are they, these foreign princes, these foreign rulers, planted. Scarcely are they sown. I've got this metaphor with the earth. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. So we have this metaphor. We have time, we have the earth, we have productivity, we have health. When God blows upon them and they wither. So we see that God has power, not only over the princes, not only over their health, not, over, not only over time, but over weather, over the planet, over the world. And to continue that last bit of this verse, and the tempest which God controls carries these princes off like stubble. Just imagine the stubble of plants, completely and totally worthless. Continuing, to whom then will you compare me? Me not being the poet, me being the Lord God. Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. That's a good question. He just obliterated the most powerful human beings on the planet. If we go back to Genesis, which was referenced at the very beginning of this poetic verse form, we know humans have dominion over all the earth. And princes have dominion over all humans. And God just blew them away with his breath. And his breath created human beings. Sorry about that. I'm echoing. So if princes are not God's equal, are not the equal of the Holy One, then who? The answer begins to come in verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them. The host being angels. The host being the stars. The host being everything in the heavens. And I look up and I actually see snow. Beautiful out there. <laughs> coming up our way. Uh, yes, it is coming up your way. We have it here. You do? Okay. That's, that's what I see. But the host, the stars, the angels, everything in the heavens, the celestial plane. Who created these? It is God. It is he who numbers them. We as humans, even when we try to number the stars, we can never even begin. We get lost somewhere around. I don't, I don't know what the Guinness Book of World Records is, but we do get lost somewhere up there. And not only does the Lord number them when we continue, he calls each and every one of them by name. At this point, you may be asking yourself, why? Why would he number them? 
why would he call each and every one of the host by name? The answer is here in the text. Because he is great in strength. Because he is mighty in power. And because not one is missing. And I want to end on that thought. Not one is missing. What do you think that means? It means that each and every one has their proper place. Each and every one is accounted for. And most of all, it means that, look, that the Lord God Almighty cares. He cares about the host. He cares about each and every individual star. He cares about each and every individual angel. And if he cares about the celestial order, why would he not care about the order here on earth? Why would he not care about each and every individual human being? Each and every ox and ass, each and every cow, each and every dog, each and every cat, each and every plant, each and every fish, each and every bird, I am each and every snowflake outside my window. That is a God who cares. And because he cares, that is how he derives his power. That is how he derives his strength. There are other types of power and strength and might as well. Of course there are. And our lesson from Isaiah 40 goes into it quite a bit. But the fact that he cares, the fact that he notices, the fact that he would notice within nanoseconds if one of us went missing, that's what makes him truly great. That's what makes our Lord truly mighty. That's what makes him worthy of our praise. Amen. And it's beautiful snow outside. I love it. We're supposed to get six inches. I don't know about you guys, but we're supposed to get six inches. Now we turn to our joys and concerns. I mentioned Diane Russell earlier for, I think, Doug, who wasn't in the meeting, in the Zoom meeting at that time. I'm, is he still here? Doug, so Diane Russell is in the hospital. I don't know if you've heard. Um, she fell out of bed, getting out of bed um, last week and has um, an infection in her stomach and they're pumping her full of antibiotics. And phone calls are welcome at this time. Any other joys and concerns? Doug is a grandfather. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I have a picture if you want to see it. We do want to see it. <laughs> we do. Of course. Of course. And Carrie is a grandmother. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> we forgot to uh, put her name in the bullet. Oh, there. yes, we did. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was I was trying to get like the exact time and date right. I was like, gotta get it right, gotta get it right. Okay, so here's Right, yeah. Oh, she's so beautiful. So cute. So precious. Mom's doing well, Marianne. Yeah, we were we were up there yesterday, and um, yeah. Good. Um. So we've been up twice now. We've, in fact, we had a we had a a Zoom meeting for a a ninetieth 
birthday party when we were there. Ooh. And they were all saying, what are you guys wearing masks for? <laughs> because we're still trying to be, you know, safe with, yeah. with Marianne and Dave. Of course. And I, and I actually, while I, while I have the floor, I would also like to ask for prayers for our, um, for our daughter Katie's father-in-law. Jeff, he, he found out that he's got uh, a form of ALS. Oh dear. Is that Jeff with a J or Jeff with a, a J? J, yes. Okay. And so he's going through some uh, consultations and so forth and we're, we're hoping for some sign that he's going to get better. Okay. Wayne, how about uh, how about your daughter? I was I was wrong on the due the due date is the tenth, so that's coming. What's that this week? Okay, coming? I was thinking. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, I was uh, I was wrong on that. Some reason I had the fifth stuck in my mind. So we'll right, just keep an I'm, eye on it. Due dates are just due dates. Yeah, anyway, they're, they're, yeah. they're guesswork right. anyway. So right. it's called yeah. it's called estimated due date. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Marianne was two days late and she went through a, well, she went and started having pains like 10 o'clock mm. and 24 hours, 10 o'clock at night and she was born 24 hours later. So she was in the hospital for about wow. 10 hours before Zinnia was born. And she's beautiful as you see and everything is, is doing well. Hey. Doug, Doug, where where is Marianne anyway? I don't know where she lives. She's in East Dummerston, Vermont, which is just oh. uh, just outside of Brattleboro. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not too far. Not too yeah. far at all. Near Dover. Yeah, she works at the she works at the Hannafords in in uh, Brattleboro. Okay. So it's basically in Brattleboro. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where that is. Brattleboro? Yeah. It's straight it's up like, the road. Yeah, I like, know. Like, I know it's straight up the road. It's just Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like 45 you gotta get minutes out more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, can't I can't get out right now. Yeah. My, you know, morning, my sister lived just... in Brattleboro for like 30, 40 years, so I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. So I feel like I've vacationed near there. Isn't there like lakes near there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I have vacation near there. Bridge to go down. Yeah. Yeah. My my niece lives in um, uh, Wilmington, which is you know nice just place. a little bit west of uh, Brattleboro. Yeah, real nice place. It's beautiful. But, yeah, Wilmington's really nice. Gorgeous. I ran into Peter and Stephanie yesterday out walking their dogs. I hadn't seen them in a long time. They're uh -huh. quite well. How are they? Very good. Good, good. They're down to one dog, unfortunately. Mm. Oh. She really wants another dog, and Peter is, like, completely against it. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting conversation when it comes yeah. down to it. <laughs> I got one, one daughter's at home teaching in Chicopee High School, and the other two are in the Albany, New York area. Right. Mm. So, Should I include that in the joys and concerns section? No need to. I thought people might be okay. interested. Yes, thank you. How are you feeling, Sue? I'm doing better. Thank you. Okay. You, whoever. Um, Zooms are I, fun. Somebody sneezes and you have no idea who. I sporadically get my um, taste. Uh, don't have smell. But yesterday I put salt on something and definitely could tell there was salt and didn't like it. So I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for the letters and concerns and cards and um, wishes and all. Um, sitting here with eight people in participation, seeing that one out of eight 
is in the situation I am is like, wow. So I'm grateful and I'm glad and um, I continue to believe. So thank you. You're welcome. Bill had his first vaccine on Thursday. Yay. So, Good. And he has this, he has an actual appointment for his next one, the end of February. Same with Ruth. He went to the senior center in Northampton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he went through the uh, Northampton Public Health Department to get it. Mm -hmm. I understand those links that were forwarded to me that I then forwarded forwarded it out needed some sort of code. So I apologize right. for that. Those those computer uh, things are just terrible. Yeah. If there are no other joys or concerns, then let us bow oh, our heads. I just thought of something. Oh, yes, of Laura, course, Donna. Laura Katie is having a birthday on Valentine's Day, just a reminder <laughs> for folks. And, um, oh, okay. And Doug is going to have a birthday on the 29th. I don't think there's a 29th this month. But, and no. I forgot about that. And, <laughs> You're having, having a birthday too this morning. I am. Yeah. Um, and my mother turned 90. <laughs> wow. Wonderful. Yeah. 90 is a great number. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I like the number 90. It's a good number. I know that, isn't that on the 99 restaurant? If you turn 99, you get a free birthday party, something like that. Something, <laughs> something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah something to look forward to. <laughs> few people get to test it. Yeah, few people yeah nobody in my family lived that old. <laughs> Not in my family no. either, yeah. <clears throat> Sadness. Can I just interrupt for one second and say thank you to Reverend Averill and to Kathy. Every single week we have service, we have music, whether we're on Zoom or whether it's YouTube or whatever. And although there are many of you that put a lot of hard work into it, I really want to acknowledge my consistent um, performance from both of you for the hard work you do, the dedication that you give to us. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, thank you. Amen. Thank you. There are no other joys and concerns. Then may we bow. Yes, may we bow our heads in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, we come to you from several different homes. But we come to you together in fellowship and communion and offer up our joint prayers this morning. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are afflicted by the coronavirus. We pray for all those who require healing from other physical, mental, and emotional ailments. Dear God, we pray for our first responders and for healthcare workers. We pray for a quick and effective deployment of the coronavirus vaccines in the United States and globally. Dear Lord, we thank you for the majesty of this, your planet, but we pray for those who are killed and or harmed by this, your planet, specifically by typhoons, snowstorms, glaciers, earthquakes, landslides, tropical storms, and all other natural disasters. We pray for innocence caught up in war. 
We pray for any and all people who are targeted because of hatred. We pray for the continued safe and peaceful transfer of power. We pray for free speech and democracy in the four corners of the earth. And we pray for the continued health and well being of our congregation at Florence Congregational. And now, dear Lord, we offer up the secrets of our hearts, which we wish to give to you and you alone, so that you might know them. Yes, Lord, we pray <laughs> and all prayers in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll now take a moment to get our bread and our cup. I know some of you might need to fetch it. So this is the time. Remember... You just need some sort of bread product and some sort of juice or wine or water or really any sort of liquid product. Okay, I think we have everyone. This is the Lord's table. It is not the table of any one church or any one denomination. It does not even need to be a table at all, merely a place that we reserve for our Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts. It is a place that we might go, where we might call Jesus our friend. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his closest friends and he took the bread, sorry, he took the bread and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And so, on this day, roughly 2,000 years later, in fellowship with all Christians here today, 2,000 years ago, and 2,000 years in the future, I give you this bread. Next, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant that I will come again after I have left you. And he took the cup and he drank it with his closest friends. And so, 2,000 years after he has gone to heaven. I give you this cup and I give you this covenant knowing that our Lord Jesus Christ will come again as he once promised. The cup. And in 
in communion with all followers of Christ, then, now, and always, I ask you to recite the Lord's Prayer with me now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, this day our daily our bread, bread, and forgive us our debts, as, as we, forgive we forgive our debtors. And lead us not, lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. For thine kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the power and the glory, glory forever. Amen. Amen. One minute, everyone. Our final hymn is different than what is in the program. Many of you might recognize the next tune. It needs no introduction, but I will say this. It is a song of hope. It is a song of truth with the original lyrics or with the new ones. And it is a song of joy in time of darkness. Give me one moment while I share the screen. Hang on. There we go. What time is it? Because the guy is saying, this, you know. Today and every day. Amen. Amen.